Enforcement Directorate, Prevention of Money Laundering Act. These are certain news items which we are seeing these days on the front page of every newspaper. So what exactly is Enforcement Directorate? How does it function? What is money laundering? How it is being stopped by the Enforcement Directorate? If in case any person has got any notice by the ED or any property is getting attached, then what are the remedies? What is the process for attaching property? And how does an ED prosecute a person for an offense of money laundering? These are all the topics which I am going to discuss in this video. Hi, this is Prashant Kanha, Advocate on Record, Supreme Court of India. And as I introduced in the introduction of this video that I will be discussing about various issues pertaining to the Prevention of Money Laundering Act. So to initiate or to enable the ED to register any case by means of lodging an ECIR, first of all there has to be a predicate offence. What is a predicate offence? A list of certain offences or list of certain acts have been given in Schedule A of the Prevention of Money Laundering Act which are around 30 acts where under if any case is registered by any of the law enforcing agency let us say the police department or by the CBI or by any CID of any state or by any agency which has the power to register FIR under section 156 of the code of criminal procedure. So once an FIR as mentioned in Schedule A of the Money Laundering Act is registered and it is found that there has been a crime and out of there, that crime there has been proceed of crimes. Then in that scenario an ECIR can be registered by the Enforcement Directorate. Now what is a proceed of crime? Let us understand that. So a proceed of crime is the benefit or the tangible benefit which comes out of a crime in form of a movable property or an immovable property. Now let's take a simple example of 420 that is cheating or a criminal breach of trust or even a case under NDPS Act where some contraband material are being sold by a group of criminals. So in this scenario the selling of contraband article or item is itself a crime. Now whatever money is being earned by selling that contraband item will amount to a proceed of crime. Now in some scenario that money may be so huge that you know empires can be built on that. Similarly let us say that some person is committing cheating, forgery or criminal breach of trust continuously or is a repeated offender and he is committing such kind of offense or counterfeiting of coins or currency notes, let us say uh, fake currency notes are being circulated by a gang <clears throat> and out of that money is being made. So the money that is being made out of that some assets are being created or even if that money is being kept in bank or in any form it is being transformed into any asset that becomes the proceed of crime. Now who would be the person who would be responsible for such proceed of crime and against whom the enforcement directorate can launch a prosecution or can attach their property. So this uh, money laundering has been defined under section 3 of the Prevention of Money Laundering Act which substantially says that whosoever directly or indirectly but knowingly, I am not repeating the exact definition but words to be noted are directly or indirectly and the third word is knowingly, anyhow assists people or person in committing a crime and then making some asset out of the proceeds of that crime or concealing such asset or pretending that such asset is not a proceed of crime. 
सो सच पर्सन आर ऑल रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द ऑफेंस ऑफ मनी लॉन्ड्रिंग सो अ पर्सन मे बी नोइंग दैट ओके दिस पर्सन इज कमिटिंग दिस ऑफेंस एंड आउट ऑफ दैट अ मनी इज बींग मेड एंड ही इज हेल्पिंग दैट मनी टू बी ट्रांसपोर्टेड और ही इज हेल्पिंग दैट ही इज हेल्पिंग इन क्रिएटिंग एन एसेट सो फॉर दैट रीजन इवन अ रियल एस्टेट एजेंट हु मे बी नोइंग दैट अ पर्सन हैज करेंसी और मनी मेड आउट ऑफ अ क्राइम एंड ही इज हेल्पिंग दैट पर्सन इन परचेजिंग अ प्रॉपर्टी नोइंग फुली दैट द प्रॉपर्टी इज बींग परचेज फ्रॉम द प्रोसीड्स ऑफ क्राइम देन ही इज ऑल्सो लाइबल फॉर मनी लॉन्ड्रिंग दो ही मे नॉट बी लाइबल फॉर द मेन ऑफेंस और द शेड्यूल ऑफेंस सो दिस इज हाउ दिस prevention of money laundering act defines money laundering and provide provides punishment for that ranging from 3 years to 7 years now comes the next step that what does an enforcement directorate do to prevent this thing or to take the remedial step so the first thing that the enforcement directorate does is that it attaches the proceeds of the crime it may be share uh, shares it may be license copyright or any tangible or intangible uh, asset which is the product of that proceed of crime so first of all that is going to be attached what does it mean by attachment attachment simply means that now it has been attached by the government by the ed and now the person have being in charge of the same or having the title of such property cannot any how create any further interest or third party interest in that so if it's a bank account no transaction can take place in that account if it's a share holding account no shares can be transferred if it's a real estate property that property cannot be sold or that property cannot be given in possession of any new person <clears throat> so this is attachment so once this these properties are attached a notice is issued to you and a case is filed before the adjudicating authority which is under section 8 of the pmla act and you have to defend your case that why the property should not be kept attached or it should not be confiscated by the enforcement directorate so you will be given an opportunity to defend your case before the adjudicating authority that why this property is not a proceed of crime or how the property that is attached by the ed officer is not a proceed of a crime so you will be given a fair opportunity of being heard before the adjudicating authority and the adjudicating authority will decide upon this issue that whether the property should be attached or it should not be attached kept attached because the property is already attached now once the property has been attached a prosecution will be launched against uh, the person who is in the possession or who has who whosoever has been knowingly whosoever has been directly or indirectly been involved in making the proceeds of the crime so once the prosecution will be launched that will a trial will take place before a special court where the ed will uh, prove its case and if the case is proven then there can be a punishment of 3 to 10 years however if the predicate if in the predicate offense the person is held to be not guilty and he if is acquitted then the proceeding under the ed will automatically lapse and once this thing is proved once you have been once the person has been punished then the property is confiscated by the central government and then the property belongs to the central government now it can do anything with that property it can sell it off or it can manage the property on its own so overall the objective of the pmla act is to finish the proceeds of the crime because as you may be understanding that these are the proceeds of the crime which lay or give birth to further crime and it involve it hampers the economy of the country with respect to uh, on the process or the proceeding under section 6 7 8 or under section 3 also i will be making separate videos which you can see under the same playlist thank you so much for watching this video hope this helps